before I get going on this, I want to give a few shout outs. Brad85, thank you for following. I, uh, I see you're a new subscriber to the channel and Instagram. I certainly appreciate that. RPM Mechanic, uh, I've seen your name pop up a bunch on some of my stuff, so I want to take the time to thank you for supporting, commenting, and adding to the conversation. Works for Tools, um, recent subscriber to the Instagram. I'm not sure if you subscribe to the YouTube or not, but I was looking at your page and uh, folks, if you need to look at a tool review, seems like he has like all the tools. Okay, here's another one. The Shite Hawk. That's probably meant to be something else. Not sure, but uh, several comments on stuff, some DMs. I certainly appreciate the support. This may look a little familiar. I had posted this over on my Instagram. I'm, uh, I'm going to take some of the longer case studies and put them over here to the YouTube channel. It's a little more conducive. So uh, I'm not just going to re-upload them. I'm going to go back over and talk about them and make new videos. This was a 2020 Nissan Altima PR25 2.5 liter variable intake on the uh, variable intake valve timing and variable exhaust valve timing uh, what made this one interesting it was one of my first run-ins with an issue with the variable electric controlled valve timing car was low mileage it would set a p0010 <clears throat> about every 500 miles so duplicating the issue uh, was going to be tough Although I did figure out the key to it. Um, general test driving, if you test drive the car easy, it looked like the exhaust cam timing was taking care of all the emissions issues where the intake valve timing wasn't doing a lot. I did find through driving and testing that if you kind of aggressively drive the car is when I could get the, get the failure to occur. Um, here's how i was set up first thing i noticed is you have a control unit here electric intake valve timing controller and it's talking to the ecm via can uh, what sticks out to me is this 40 amp fuse uh, that's a lot uh, i'm sure that the engineers did not want 40 amps running through this dude so they incorporated this dude so this is the brain this is the muscle something else i thought was cool is uh, 2837 these are the cam and crank sensors they are communicating these hard line between the two controllers and not via can uh, just something I'll, I'll look for it's kind of interesting this is power coming in uh, this is power and ground this is an electric motor folks it's not magic if you run power one way it spins one way if you run power the other way it spins the other way uh, I haven't dug much into this. This dude has its own timing um, position sensor. Uh, I have checked the signals. I haven't completely wrapped my head around what it's looking for. I know that this dude spins really fast. So I'm not sure if this is measuring the speed. Um, there, If you replace this, there is a reset procedure. You have to kind of tell it where zero is. So maybe it's counting itself. I'm not exactly sure, so I'm not going to elaborate much in this area because um, I don't want to put something out there that's not verified. So with this car, what I've done is I've back probed the black wire here, the 44 here. I've got an amp clamp around one of the wires, so I'm looking at before signals. Capture. And what I have here is the blue, <clears throat> the blue trace here is voltage coming in. I wanted to monitor... My voltage supply during the incident to make sure I didn't have any dropouts the way I have it set up is power goes through the motor this red trace is, is the ground side it grounds this leg when it makes a um, advancement so I have the clamp oriented so amperage will go up uh, if it grounds the other side to say retard 
everything will be backwards. The amperage would go down. Uh, this would the red would then be become my input, and then the green here that would would be the ground leg. Um, so just to keep it simple, um, I'm going to monitor it this way, and this is the way it failed anyway when it was trying to advance the cam. So I'm on page one of three. Um, I'm not really stressing the system in here, and this is what made it somewhat intermittent because uh, the person that drives it must have drove the car kind of easy. But if, uh, if we kind of zoom in, and we see we have we have some amperage movement here. We have very little duty. You see how small see how small it is. Remember, it's a negative duty to make it advance on this leg so we're only grounding for this amount of time so we're not going to get a huge movement but you can see it's not being stressed right now uh, the system's only running uh, let's see you know less than two amps is going through the the brushes and the connections and we get on in here and even in here it's calling for some movement and you see I have no amp flow that's a, the big thing you know the signal the signals going to a motor is, is kind of what the computer wants the amperage shows us the work so it's always important to check the amperage um, to make sure that, that it's actually working uh, let's go in here you can see we're getting a little more command. We're getting a little more amperage, and I already see some issues. You see this right here? Uh, a good motor, this ought to be like a perfect sawtooth pattern, and, and we'll see that on the after capture. I'm starting to see a little bit of problems in here. I'm maintaining 14 volts. Uh, the car's obviously running. Um, let's get on further into the capture. You can see in here, let's see, let's zoom in there. You see my amperage is starting to come up a little bit. I'm starting to get more on time. More ground equals more current. Um, wrong cursor. Let's try the gold one. So we're running about 6 amps through it now. Still holding a decent pattern. Um, very little movement on the cam. But there again, it, will, it never coded when it was uh, running easy like this. Let's move on in here. We're getting a little more amp flowing. We're starting to break down in here. Now, this whole time I'm seeing this, it is screaming bad connection. Um, the more load I put on it, the more breakdown I get. Um, it, it's just telling me, hey, bad connection, bad connection, bad connection. So uh, I have verified all pin fits and connectors and, and all that by this point. Well, after I seen this capture, then I verified all my connection points everything visible that I could see you can see in here it's starting to look really bad it's breaking down here uh, totally missing in here and we are applying I can do a little quick math channel uh, it's a duty channel uh, I have went over this on my Instagram in a little more detail but uh, this is a duty math you can kind of see where it's calling for more duty right in here and then as it calls for it it doesn't really get it right away and it does right in here so we'll uh we'll look at that some more so let me go on into page two let's get in here where i was really getting after the throttle a little bit and see what we see and during all that mess, you see I, I maintain a constant 14 volts. Let's get in here. This is where it really gets ugly. If we zoom way on in here, you can see I'm grounded for a long time here. The computer really wants this thing to move. And it's trying. Then it falls out right in here. And you can kind of see the voltage drop in my... Uh, this is my source voltage the voltage drop is a couple of volts right there um that tells me that there is current flowing but you can see the fallouts in here and let's see 
remember I said at the beginning this thing was fused by 40 amps well we're up to 25 amps and uh, I see why now I would have no idea that this little motor would pull that so let's look at our duty ratio I've turned our math channel back on so right in here you can see it's almost calling for a hundred percent duty it is right at 98 percent and it gets some it gets some movement but we're losing connection we lost connection right there so let me turn that back off the software hates updating with this channel on let's get into page three and more of the same in here uh, we, we've got the command we just don't have the connection to make for it to do the work um, you can see it made a big change here let's see what that looks like with the duty math channel right there isn't that cool um, so right in here it is trying to get about 60% and then it jumps way up here to 95 percent uh, and it just it just can't hold itself together it's not moving like it wants uh, you can see we maintain voltage the whole time which uh, I suspected let's move a cursor down here yeah see it's it's commanding 97 percent and it got to move here but then it just loses connection in here and then what I think is kind of cool also is after this thing is tried and tried and tried and tried to move these cams and it can't you kind of see this the, the computer it just gives up uh, this would be fail safe you'd have to uh, clear the memory I might could have cycled the key to get it to go again I can't remember but right in here it has tried several times to get this cam to move it cannot so it just flatlines it cuts the power renders the system in op and um, trips this code p001 p0010 and um, now it's time to try to fix it I'm gonna put some pictures up at the end it'll show where the bad connection is and uh, I'm gonna move I'm gonna go ahead and put the good capture up after I've repaired the car right, here's the after capture I'm gonna zoom in you can see here some of the positives and negative the movement um, the gold is the current we'll start over here and this is uh, this is picture perfect here you have very little command therefore you have very little movement on the amperage but it's got a great pattern to it uh, you can see when it commands for it no command no amp flowing that's the way it should be uh, it really doesn't miss it, it's just nice and smooth looks like a nice little sharp saw we get in here to where you know I kind of start whopping the throttle a little bit to really stress it to make sure we definitely have it fixed you can kind of come across you can see where the bottoms get longer which there again more ground more current and uh, right in here you can see a nice change let's bring in our duty math channel again uh, where's that math channels duty minus B it's channel B and we are going to the negative side so you have to tell it to measure it on the negative side so yeah you can see right there it made a nice change the computer commanded here and it got exactly what it wanted right there and it all worked out real nice let's see it went from uh, 27% duty to this is where I can see it. Uh, it jumped up to 88% right there. And our amperage went, our amperage jumped on up there to 35. Uh, like I said at the beginning in the wiring diagram, that 40 amp fuse, it kind of stuck out. I see why now. But uh, 
the after this is the after capture like I said this is standard electric motor stuff the the brush is reading the commentators it's nice and sharp I'm gonna put some pictures up at the end here and they are the two parts that failed there was actually a seal that leaked you'll see the big seal oil had gotten into this area and contaminated the connection between the two contacts and the two brushes that all this amperage goes through so the fix was to replace the big seal and um, I went on and replaced the actuator portion basically the portion that contained the brushes uh, I was worried about too much oil getting into the some of the electronics so just to be on the safe side I went on and replaced that component also but uh, I, the captures are cool they show bad connection and once I realized it wasn't an external connection anything that I could physically put my hands on I decided to go ahead and investigate inside the motor a little bit and as soon as I pulled the three or four little six mil uh, six mils bolts ten mil head bolts out I found all the oil so that definitely uh, definitely fit the bad connection puzzle that I was uh, piecing together interesting system I learned a lot uh, although the system was very intermittent uh, the scope was still able to show me a breakdown uh, which is what I like uh, even in the beginning of the first capture when it wasn't failing so to speak I could see it the scope was showing me that and then I was able to manipulate the engine and make the system work harder in order to produce a 100% um, failure so like I said I had put this on the Instagram I'm uploading it here to the YouTube it's a little more conducive uh, to a longer case study hope you enjoyed this um, I'm gonna probably put a few more things over here from Instagram but I'm just gonna redo the whole things and uh, if you like what you see uh, tell somebody like it subscribe share all that good stuff and I do want to say my wife she watches all my videos uh, she doesn't have a clue as to what she's watching but she supports and she watches all my videos. So I'm going to find out if you watch this one because I'm only going to say this at the very end. <laughs> all right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. And um, you guys be good. Scope everything you can. Take it easy.